for Pink Paper Video. Uh, I'm going to be making a layout today for you using two of my favorite things. One of them is a, a rainbow color scheme and the other is this pair of fringe scissors. Um, mine happen to be a Martha Stewart product but they're actually available um, from a variety of different brands. The Martha Stewart one is just probably the most easy to get one. You can get it at Joann's. I think you can probably get it at most of the big box craft stores. So your first step to this layout is to choose all of your papers, get out your fringe scissors, and cut along the edge of each paper with your fringe scissors until you have a strip of each color each paper that you've chosen long enough to go across your layout whatever size that is going to be mine was a 12 by 12 so i tried to pick mostly 12 by 12 papers but because some of the patterns and textures that i wanted were either not available to me in a 12 by 12 or I had used that paper and so the paper itself was not 12 by 12 anymore. I decided to go ahead and attach two separate strips together of those papers that weren't long enough with a little, my little tiny attacher type stapler. Um, at this point, I'm just laying everything out and making sure that I have enough to cover the whole the whole layout and I realized that I'm a little short at the top and also if I wanted to add another layer I had already put three sort of pink colored things at the top and I probably needed to move on to another color so I went ahead and I got a piece of purple to round out my rainbow color scheme and to help me get to the very top of the 12 by 12 sheet now I did speed up this process quite a bit. This is at a 400, so it's a four times my original speed. I wish I moved that fast. <laughs> and um, as you will see here in a second, now that you see m m how I've laid everything out, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use some, my ATG gun is what I used to attach these to the background paper, but I don't make you sit through that part. So here we are with my 12 by 12 sheet with all of the little strips uh, attached to the background already. And I just turn it over so that I can clearly see uh, where the extended little pieces are so that I can trim the whole thing off and make it a square 12 by 12. These papers are pulled from many various premium paper stacks by GCWV. Um, I believe almost all of the ones that I pulled from were monochromatic stacks. So the premium paper stacks are five different papers coordinated together either by sort of a theme or, um, or color. And so I just pulled out a bunch of the stacks that were put together by color and pulled out my favorite of all of the of all of the ones that I had I had and made my rainbow up of those premium paper stack papers so just just because I really don't want the edges of all of those little strips to come up I go ahead and take my tiny attacher stapler and I go up and down the sides and I just kind of randomly put different different little anchor staples up and down both of the sides so that none of those strips move or can be peeled up. And then I'm going from the top all the way down to the bottom and I am texturizing the the, the little strips so that so that the whole thing is just very 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 textural. Next I have pulled out just a bunch of random multicolored embellishments I actually don't end up using almost any of those I end up going with more single color embellishments because what I ended up doing was um, 
trying to keep each of the embellishments within the strips of color that they represented and the multicolor embellishments didn't end up working for that once I decided on it. So instead of using one four by six photo, I went, I, these are phone photos of, um, of us <laughs> hand painting Easter eggs. And that is the story behind the layout that my grandmother uh, got this, one of those little kits for Easter eggs, but it required you to hand paint all of the Easter eggs. And we walked in the night before Easter and she was just standing there with the eggs in front of her unpainted, looking very confused. So we ended up staying and, and helping her with her, uh, with her eggs. Um, she was very grateful, but that was something we were not originally prepared to do the night before Easter was go and hand paint some Easter eggs, but you know, they ended up being beautiful. And so probably something we'll never do again, but, uh, it made some great pictures and, um, experience that I won't forget, especially since I've documented it here. So I've cut little small pictures and then mounted them on this black piece of matte paper and now I'm just I find that that glue dots or zots whichever brand you you have are the best for attaching anything to a textured background like this because they'll just hold on to whatever whatever you anchor them to whatever you stick them to they'll pretty much hold especially if it's paper so instead of a runner, which kind of needs to be flat to, to stick and the dots they hold in this kind of situation, um, the best. And I happen to be using the medium size Zots there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put down all of my embellishments. Now I did off camera do a little bit of um, pre-decorating it just to make sure that I that I had enough colors of things to represent what I wanted to represent. Um, these little chipboard banners are actually a very old supply. Sorry, um, they're from a fan an old fancy pants collection called Childish. Um, but they're sort of a generic shape, so they could be made out of um, chipboard you have on hand and paper they could just be paper you don't have to actually make them chipboard I just happen to have these in my stash um, and so I went ahead and pulled them out because they were multicolored and kind of exactly the shape that I wanted um, but I was also secure in the fact that they were easily uh, recreated with other supplies that you would have in your in your stash Another thing that I added were some little chipboard dots and little chipboard hearts and stars that were also from those that childish collection. But again, things that could be punched out, cut out of your silhouette, um, probably found on other sticker sheets and chipboard sheets, you know, easily recreated. The little bows that I just put on are Amy Tangerine um, and they are a plasticky material, little tiny bow ties. And I just added them to sort of put something at the very bottom, something in the middle and something at the top that would draw your eye up and down that side. Then I pre-cut this black banner, which will hold part of my title. And I use these large vinyl thickers to to do the rest of my title but I need the spacing to be correct from the top of the photo on up so I went ahead and put the second part of my title on first now the first part of my title is the word painted the whole title is painted by hand and I used this older lifestyle crafts die which is um, a letter, it's a, an alphabet, and I think some characters, um, all in one wafer thin dye. 
And to create the letters the way that I did, I went ahead and I cut all of the letters in a white one time. And then I cut all the letters in the specific colors that I wanted um, a second time. And as you as you'll see as I put them on, what I did was I took the 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 color version of the letter and I cut it so it looks like paint is dripping down the tops of each of the letters. And as I put it across, you'll see that I sort of did it so it almost looks like it's connected to each letter. It is not it's not a difficult process actually. It is very easy. You cut one, you cut the second one, and then you just sort of take hand scissors and cut a little wavy line and you just don't use the bottom part of each letter. You'll see it better when I do a close-up um, at the end. So at this point I'm getting to the end of my embellishing and I realize that Number one, I have a lot of black accents on the right side of the layout and almost none on the left side. And that the papers that I've chosen, some of them have a lot of sparkle and some of them don't. And so I go through my little stash of, um, of some people call these dew drops. They are, I got mine from the Royal Castle Shop, and I have them in a variety of colors, and they're sort of just a little drop, they're, they're almost like a piece of acrylic that you can see through, and it's just sort of shiny, and it, they're in a bunch of pretty colors, and they add shine without adding glitter. So I go through all of my, my little dewdrop. Uh, colors and I put dew drops from the top and I keep them in their their color areas and just go all the way down just to add a bit of shine from the top to the bottom on the left side. The other thing I do to add a little bit of black into that side of the layout is I take some flat black sequins that are also from the Royal Castle Shop and I attach them throughout that left side just to kind of tie the whole color seam together and give it a little bit of balance from the right to the left. The last thing I'm going to do on this layout is I'm going to create my journaling. Now because this layout is so story driven I knew that my journaling was probably going to be a prominent feature of this layout which is not usually my style but it is one of the reasons that I chose to have so much embellishment on one side and not much on the other because I knew in advance that I was going to put my journaling as a balance to all that embellishment. So here I'm just cutting some strips of white paper and I am I'm doing all of my journaling on those strips. I believe the pen I'm using is um, uh, Faber-Castell and it is one of my favorite journaling pens. I have them in uh, super fine, fine and medium is the pack that I had and they came to, to each in that package. Here I realized that I didn't cut enough strips for the entire story. So I go ahead and I cut some more strips and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to fit them on the layout later because the most important thing is to get the whole story down. Otherwise, this layout doesn't make any sense. <laughs> As you can see, I end up using almost all of the strips that I cut, and 
the design that I am going for is a vertical design up and down the right side of the paper um, around my focal image and my title. Amazingly, even though I did not measure and I kind of was just flying by the seat of my pants on this one, um, they all ended up fitting. So real quick here, I'm just going to attach them all with a tape runner. This tape runner I got um, at a crop at the CKC, the, co the convention, Creative Keys Creating Keepsakes convention um, this year as one of the gifts that they give you at the beginning of each crop. It is from a company called Plus and I really love it. I love the feel of it in my hand. Um, I love the strength of the adhesive. I'm looking forward to ordering more of that particular kind of adhesive. So there is my done, um, my finished layout and just showing you a few details and then there'll be some still photos here in just a second. I wanted to thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you love rainbows and fringy scissors as much as I do and if you have them in your stash go ahead and pull them out. Um, visit the DCWV blog today to see more up close photos and thank you so much for joining me every time. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye bye.